What is up guys? I've been wanting to make um, a second version of this video for a while now. So now that I've compiled enough footage, like pretty much with the car stock, with just springs, and then with just the arms, then the whole Verkline rear end, and then the whole Verkline suspension, um, and then the whole Verkline suspension and being tuned, so putting more power to the ground, which means the suspension has to work harder. Um, now as you install, what we're mainly, what I'm trying to mainly show is um, the squat, the way um, this the system elim helps eliminate the squat, which will keep more um, weight on the front end, because when you launch, you're getting power put, you know, you're going like this, your tires, uh, there's less weight on the front tires, which enables them to spin more, um, if at all, depending on the setup. But, uh, so like as the more power you put down to the car, the more it's going to squat. So to show now that I'm tuned versus not being tuned, um, how much it doesn't squat compared to having less power is even more of an accomplishment, um, if that makes sense. So stock, I'm showing it squats, say, five inches, and now, now tuned with the new parts, or with the parts on, I wouldn't say new, they're not new, but say it only squats two inches versus five that's a lot more impressive is than if you put the kit on the otherwise stock car and it only squats four. Well, you're not really putting that much power down to even make it squat. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was trying to explain this to a guy the other day. And uh, now that I have more footage now that I'm tuning, even I still, I'm not even stage two or like full bolt on, you know, whatever. So there's still a lot more power to be had on the table, but for this clip right here, I'm going to play it along with watching it. So we're going to watch this. we got the tuned up top, stock at the bottom. Now look specifically at the wheels. I'm going to slow it down. Look at the front wheels and how much wheel gap there is. And how much. Now look at this. I'm going to play this again. That wheel there is uh, not not necessarily. We're not necessarily looking at the squat. Look at like the the center of the wheel and watch it move back and forth. That's like showing the play in the bushings in the rear end. So later on, I want to replacing all the bushing. But there's pretty much no rubber bushings in the rear end, like at all. Everything's spherical. Yeah, everything's spherical. I can't think of one actual bushing in the rear anymore. Besides what's in my diff itself where they also have inserts in them from ECS so this kit does a lot and um, I'll put up my draggy here I ran my best now at 1203 with a 187 60 foot now when I put this Verkline rear end on and went to the track which I'll try and find a clip of it for the first time the eighth mile I cut a 1.760 on the stock software and now I can't get that low anymore. It's because I added a bunch of camber. So my rear now is at two, negative 2.2 and my front's at like negative, I think 3.4 or something like that. And I had a caster. So there's still like more meat on the table. The car is just set up for autocross. So if I were to take the toe out of the car and the camber, um, this would probably look a lot better because of the car, like actually just the tires straight up going straight rather than um, what do I got in the front? A little bit of toe out. So my tires don't face completely straight. They, they face a little out and they're tilted in. And the same with my rears. They're tilted in and out a little bit. So you can imagine how the tire wear is. And that's even, like I said, also in these videos, like, or at least in the current launching, my tires are like bald on like the inside half because I haven't rotated them like I should. It's been winter and there's no racing and I don't care. So... New tires coming soon, but I really wanted to show this. I'm going to show um, Last Newman's garage car. He's on completely stock suspension, like stock springs, stock subframe, stock all that. And we're going to throw his car up, and we'll show arms or just springs versus his car. See how much it would show, and then arms versus his car to show how much just the arms alone would do. And then um, I'll also so show the whatchamacallit, the full kit and tune versus the way his car is now. And he's E30 tuned. So he's, he's we're making roughly the same amount of power, probably like 380 or so. Um, 
based off a of Hummel Mechanics video. He doesn't have an intercooler, but he does have the intake and pretty much the same tune as I do. He has 034, I have Racing Line, but they're sister companies. So based off of his dyno, he makes like 380 something. So whatever. We're pretty much the same power level, uh, me and uh, Mark from Last Fumes Garage. So it's a good comparison to show stock suspension versus fully pretty much modified suspension. I have all my suspensions change out besides my struts. I'm saving up for JRI coilovers to complete the whole Verk line um, system with JRI. And that's gonna be like the best combination for this car. I think the car is really gonna shit and get and ain't nobody gonna stop me once uh, once that's all together, but they're really expensive, so I'm saving up. But I really just wanted to make this video just to show um, a lot of people out there is like, does the Verkline stuff even really work? I hear this, that, and the third, but I never see any data. I put out like a billion videos on this stuff now, and this one should hopefully be the most compelling like, to show. It's really hard to, to get people to understand these things. They just, they think that there's other ways around. I just, they think they could just get stiffer springs and get away with, uh, you know, combating the squat. But it's not just that, the, the arms, and or the, i wouldn't say necessarily just squat but launching in general like getting rid of those bushings getting rid of eliminating some squat um all those things that keep your suspension in the proper geometry when you're putting power down whether in a straight line in a corner during braking is key to making whatever goal you want to make and these cars are made for comfort from the factory so you got to realize there's a lot of stuff in the suspension that is made for comfort, not motorsport. Now, this combination I have is gonna get even more less squat <laughs> once I have like real struts in the car where you can slow down how fast the suspension goes down and how fast the suspension comes back up with two-way um, adjustability. I'll be able to really fine dial in the way that this works. But and I'll make another video once we do that, but that's gonna be a whole process because we're gonna do adjust bump steer or not bump steer what's it called the bump stops and um we gotta uh, what's it called we gotta weigh the car to get the balances left to right back to f back back to front done and just all types of stuff it's gonna be a really really neat um experience getting to go through that whole nine and doing it the right way i went into bc coilovers on my mark seven i knew a little but i didn't know a lot and now i know more than i did now and i'm still I know for sure there's a lot, still a lot more for me to learn about suspension, but I know a hell of a lot more than what I did back then. So I'm going to be able to set this car up perfectly. And right now these stock struts are like hurting me because they, they're either too harsh or too soft and they're never really perfect for any situation. Like they're good enough to like get the job done, but there's like so much more meat left on the table, especially when it comes to like tighter autocross stuff. I really wish I had that adjustability to adjust the front's different from the back. Cause you know, with the buttons now, you either got, you only got a couple modes to pick from and are changing all four at the same time, assumingly. So being able to go up and just stiffen the fronts or stiffen the rears or, or slow down one um, side of the car versus the other side of the car, it all depends on the track and the conditions and so many things. And even for drag racing, they'll be great. Um, he said the car is not really set up for drag racing. If it was, I wouldn't have all this camber and tow into the car. And that just in the back of my mind, that that helps me know that hey, like right now I probably could run an eleven if I had the car set up um, for this stuff. But you guys know I really love my uh, parking lot racing and uh, hopefully getting to some big tracks this year. But we got a few more things we got to do. And every time there's an event, I either have guard that weekend or we're traveling or something. I know it sounds like bullshit excuses, but I'm going to get there, I promise. The last track I was been to was the Sandia Raceway up in Albuquerque. And I've ridden that track forward, backwards, upside down. I love that track. And that's the only track I've ever really raced on. So really excited to get up to VIR and hopefully up to Summit Point and down to Atlanta. Race with my boy Kyle. So... Anyway, hopefully this video wasn't too boring for you guys. Bunch of clips. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.